Welcome to Deep Conversations, where we engage in thought-provoking dialogue to identify leadership solutions to today's most challenging conflicts. Stream live each week, Saturday, 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m., hosted by diversity, equity, and inclusion strategist and CEOs and Tommy Lewis. Join us and add your voice to this engaging diversity conversation. Good morning, Greater Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, the United States, and the world. My name is Eric Ellis. Uh, I'm President and CEO of Integrity Development Corporation, and I'm joined this morning by my good friend and brother, Tommy Lewis, President and CEO of Make It Plain Consulting. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Tommy. How are you, man? Uh, it's, it's a wonderful Saturday, Eric, a wonderful Saturday. Uh, here in Southwest Ohio, we have a baseball club called the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah. Uh, back in 1869, they became the first professional baseball club in the United States. And so we have this huge opening day, which was this past week. They play again today against the Pittsburgh Pirates. And I'm excited. Not that I'm going to the game, but excited, hopefully excited about a great season for the Cincinnati Reds organization. Yeah, Tommy, I, I agree with you on that. I uh, was at the opening day. This was my first opening day ever. And so I was uh, grateful to be there, man, and just had a ball, enjoyed the fans and all the people and all the positive energy, man. It's just a beautiful thing. You know, sports are a beautiful thing in a community. So grateful to be there. I serve on the Reds Diversity, uh, Equity, Inclusion Advisory Board. And I uh, have enjoyed providing some perspective. So uh, good news, man. Good news. How's your week been, Tommy? How'd your week go? Week was OK. It was OK. It was, uh, again, another week of administrative work. Uh, we had a, about four or five requests for proposals, direct asks. These were not RFPs that are out there in the kind of the, the atmosphere, but direct asks. And so we had the initial meetings to understand more about what the client was needing. We were able to offer up a few bas basically startup consultation solutions just for them to consider. Uh, because sometimes, Eric, uh, organizations may not always be ready for a consultant. They That's may right. not be ready. It's something that they may need later, but they, they when they have one person that has been charged to move an organization of 5,000 forward, no budget, no staff, no direction. Uh, the consultant is great, but you may need some coaching, the individual. Right. 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 Let me support you as a consultant, quote unquote. Uh, but if you want to, they wanted to jump right into training, wanted to jump in right into an assessment. All of these things are important. But first, as the leader in the work, where are you? Mm -hmm. How are you grounded in the work? Are you grounded on concrete or is it sand or is it on a barge? You're moving with the wind. Right. And so yeah. that's what my week looked like this week, particularly that I was <clears throat> almost talking my way out of opportunities. Man. Right. And in reverse, the client said, this is why we need you. Right. 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 You know, how much how much are you going to charge for those nuggets? Oh, I'm not going to charge you anything. Right. Those are best practices. Right. 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 And so I'm very, very happy and proud this week that myself and the team, um, we are truly in the value add approach to this work. Value add, Eric. And our clients, potential clients, those who are in the diversity conversations community truly see a value in this work and what I and you have to offer. And that's how my week went. Beautiful week. Well, Tommy, I'm great to hear that report. And I want to uh, join the chorus of people that endorse Tommy Lewis and Make It Plain Consulting as being an honorable organization with a leader who cares deeply about his clients and is not in there just trying to sell something extra, but yeah. really trying to help people uh, get the right foundation to build on 
And that same integrity, you'll be working uh, throughout the time that you're with any of your clients, Tommy. So just grateful to hear that kind of report, man, because that's so important. Uh, this week was a, a great week for me. I was uh, out of town, went to uh, Philadelphia and uh, spoke to the uh, sort of food and marketing uh, uh, conference at St. Joseph University. Uh, and uh, sort of was a rapid fire, sort of do four sessions, concurrent sessions, one after another, after another. Man, at the end of a day like that, you're just like, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I really enjoyed, uh, people said, you know, the word is that about that third or fourth, uh, you know, round, facilitators start falling off. But it looks like you still got your energy. Mm -hmm. That's because I get my energy from people. Yeah. You know, Tommy, I get my energy from people, man. If, if anybody shows up in a in a room to hear anything that you and I have to say, we're trying to give them our best, ain't we? Yes, we are. And that's what I was uh, pleased to be able to do there. Uh, and then I also had a session with the... Uh, uh, American Society for Microbiology, and I've done a lot of learning in that space. And one of the highlights that uh, they were uh, pleased with is I did some research on the intersection between unconscious bias and microbiology. And mm -hmm. what are the things that are in common about both of those? Uh, complexity, uh, they're both invisible often, to the work that they're doing. Uh, you know, uh, microbiologists are looking at the connection between microorganisms that are, you know, something that we can't see and then looking at how that impacts uh, the environment, our lives, our health. And so it's just uh, it was really enjoyable to be able to uh, work with them and to really be able to engage them in a conversation, Tommy. Uh, whether people know it or not, you and I are not happiest when we are teaching and presenting slides. Right. We're actually happiest when you're talking, when your voice is being heard, when you're asking questions and making statements and sharing uh, deeply how this conversation affects you and your life. Uh, that's when you and I, man, are at our best and we're uh, just enjoying that. So I had a chance to really, uh, you know, we had put together a wonderful detailed time agenda, you know, all the, yeah. every second by second, you know. And we had to actually put that uh, on the back burner and sort of uh, work with uh, the conversation and the questions and the passion that people brought to that conversation. So I was just really inspired by that. And we're continuing to work with uh, Americans for the Arts on their uh, searches and uh, sort of wrapping up one and about to wrap up a second one. So just, man, I'm, I'm enjoying life and uh, continuing to make music. So those are the things that happened on my calendar this week. Eric, it's, it's interesting you share that you, you triggered a thought that I had uh, about this activity that I do and you do as well, obviously, in our sessions. Uh, typically, we, we, we start with either some, uh, you know, how uh, working agreements. How are we going to work together? Ground rules, if you will. Mm -hmm, right. And then from an adult learner perspective, there's a quick activity. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not starting with 15 minutes of lecture and sit and get. It's really get you involved quickly, follow up with some foundational concepts, mm -hmm. move into the next activity, have you do that, debrief, and repeat the cycle. What I've learned to do is when we break out into sessions, you know, I, I may give them the, the, the instructions. Here's what we're going to talk about in our small breakout groups of four or five people and say the activity is only 15 minutes, four mm -hmm. people, 15 minutes, you got to jump in, start talking and socializing. I've learned that some groups, depending on the personalities of the members of that group, some people may be more vocal and get right into the assignment right. and start to go through it and then, you know, pass the microphone around and they jump into it. Others may be unsure about the instructions, the activity, hit the activity at a high level, and then go off into their own conversation. Right, right. What I have learned to do is when I bring folks back, I often say, so we're just going to have a recap, a debrief uh, for others who are not in your group to hear some of your thoughts, some of your ahas, maybe even some of your experiences, because again, they were not in your group. However, whatever you talked about, 
was good because what you talked about was important to you. Mm, okay. I say it all the time. Yeah. I know we had that task to do. Right. But I overheard people talking about their family and their son is going off to college and they have to pick up their you know, young person. Uh, that's important. Mm. So I never minimize someone saying, yeah, this is a good activity, but this is what's surfacing and I have an audience to listen to it. Mm. I'm that person, the facilitator saying, this is what energizes me. Like mm. you just said, right. people's stories. Right. We'll get into the learning, right. right? But it's the experience that I think we should bring value to. Tommy, let me just uh, applaud that and say uh, that's why you're successful at what you do. Uh, there's so many people that uh, that do this work or any work that believe that if they're the facilitator, then it's about them and their agenda. And they don't, they don't have the language or the interest in sometimes sharing the space with people. It's almost like if somebody just clumsily uh, start speaking out some of their biases, you don't want to just scold them. Sometimes we want to show grace and love. And it's in the modeling of the right behavior that they'll choose. Hey, I like that guy. Maybe, And I like how he's responding to me. Maybe I'll try that. And that's what you're doing there is you're saying, I've got an agenda, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you that I'm not going to be thrown off by whatever you do uh, because it was what you needed. That's good, Tom. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank That's you. playing the long game. Well, we've, the got long a, game. we've got a guest, man, that you've invited. Why don't you uh, uh, talk to uh, our, our community about who you have with us this morning? Absolutely. Uh, speaking of experiences, Eric, uh, several years ago in my work, I, I had realized that there are across the country and particularly in Southwest Ohio, there are programs, uh, day camps in the summertime for kindergartners, maybe first graders up to sixth grade. And then there are summer employment opportunities, summer youth employment opportunities, but you have to be 14 years of age and older to have take advantage of those opportunities. Mm -hmm. So there was a gap. Wow. There, there's a gap for those students who are in, rising into the seventh grade, middle school, going into the eighth grade, maybe even going into the ninth grade and they were younger than 14, what do they do? Right. How do they continue to learn and grow? And so I created a nonprofit organization called the Illuminate Leadership Institute. And that institute has a six day immersive residential conference that's held at Northern Kentucky University. And we're gonna to expand to other universities as well. And basically, we invite some of the uh, most I would say energetic, thoughtful, and eager to learn students who we call scholars to enjoy the experience from not only classroom learning about conflict resolution, and when I say learn, it's actually doing, right? Conflict resolution, emotional intelligence, uh, problem solving, team building. We meet and greet with executives of corporations. Okay. Uh, and, and these executives are mostly women, Right. Because many of our uh, participants are young ladies. Some are men, but we're trying to bring those young men in, too. And our guest is one of those scholars. OK, Elisa, Elisa Bolt. Uh, she's a student scholar and leader at Finneytown High School. Uh, she is a, a diamond in the rough. I would not even say she's a diamond in the rough. I think she's a diamond in the open. Right. This young lady is sharp, is sharp. She has a sense of humor. She's athletic. You and I, Eric, know about the the personality of athletes. Mm -hmm. Right. We win. We want to win. But we're also team players. Right. right? We can take direction mm -hmm. from coaches mm -hmm. and professors and teachers and parents. We can do that. All right. Miss Bolt is that person. So. I'm going to allow her to introduce herself because I can talk for days about her. But welcome, Alyssa. Welcome. All right. Well, hi, everybody. Good morning. I'm Alyssa Bolt. I'm currently a freshman at Finneytown High School. As you know, I'm 14 years old and I'm currently on the varsity wrestling team and I'm an avid member in our school's gardening club. 
along with being a student in our leadership class at our school, which I was very excited to join. And in the future, I would just like to work with something with the genetics because it's just such an interesting topic that's constantly growing and it just really sparked my interest. Uh, this, this is great. This is great. And so, Alyssa, we, this is a, a, a chat between just the three of us mm -hmm. and a few extra million people that are watching. Oh, wow. But no worries about them, right? So let's start. I want to start with wrestling. Mm -hmm. Wrestling. Yeah. Why wrestling? What was the path to become a wrestler? And then what, what's the mindset of being a wrestler? I feel like what made me choose wrestling, it, it was kind of a very big surprise to me myself. I know during my seventh grade year, my sports of humanity teacher, Mr. Bowles, he was like the wrestling coach and he was like, oh, you should come and join. But that was the COVID year. So I was kind of just like, I'm at home on an online class. You really think I'm about to come in? And then fast forward to my eighth grade year, he was like, oh, come on down to the wrestling room. And I had a few friends that had wrestled. And I was like, you know what, guys, I'll try it. And like ever since that day, I had been stuck in the room and it had just been my rock for everything. And it just constantly kept me going. And it's just like something that I love doing. And even though I'm currently on a slight little break for myself right now, but I know I'm joining back up soon with the freestyle season starting up. And just like the mindset with wrestling that you have to have, a lot of people will think it's just like a sport that you do yourself because you're the only one that's out on the mat. But no, it's not just you that's out on the mat. It's your coaches, your teammates that are supporting you there. And you have to realize you're not just out there for yourself. You're out there for everybody that's supporting you and everybody that wants this for you. You're not the only one that wants this for you. Everybody else wants that for you, wants that for you. And you can't just have this as a me, me, me mindset. It's a we mindset. Hmm. Powerful. Now that's, uh, so forgive me for this dumb question from the diversity guy, mm -hmm. but uh, do they have uh, young women that have a wrestling team or are you wrestling on the uh, young men's team? Uh, I'm wrestling on both teams. So depending on what event it is, like I'll either be with the boys or the girls, but now that girls is sanctioned in Ohio, I've had more events where I'm just wrestling girls, but I'm just like, it, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to pin you regardless. So oh. <laughs> Woo. Hey, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So talk to us you about know, that because I think that mindset is so powerful because I'll say that I've got four kids. When uh, my wife was having our first, I was so looking for a boy because I'm a ball player and I'm, I'm sitting there waiting out pops a girl. I said, oh, well, she's going to be my ball player. And that's what I did is made my daughter a basketball player. And I enjoy watching her beat guys, mm -hmm. you know, and I know that today as an adult, she's a more confident young woman because of the sports that she played. So what's your what's in your mind when you're wrestling uh, boys? I feel like the biggest thing in my mind is it literally does not matter about your strength with you wrestle. It's literally all about your mindset, because if you can't mentally be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to win this match. Like you have to be present in the moment. You can't be like, oh, yeah. What if I don't? What if you're questioning yourself? If 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 you need to be in the moment knowing I'm just going to do the best that I can, because even if you don't win, it just matters that you put your best self out there, because I know there have been matches myself where I'm like, maybe I should just lay back and get pinned. Like, honestly, let me just go get a slushy and tell the coach I'm injured. But I just have to stick through and realize I'm not the only one that's rooting for me in this moment. Like, I have to keep going no matter what, because you just got to put your best self out there in the moment, because that's really what wrestling is about. Right. And here's a former wrestler here. Sorry, Tommy. Here's a former wrestler here. Uh, Terry Cooley he watches with us uh, every week. Uh, he is my college roommate. Uh, he's from Hamilton, Ohio, was a, a wrestler, big time wrestler there and wrestled at, at college as well. That's, that's interesting. I know I've been looking at like the college wrestling teams and like how they're always what are they called when, oh, there are always scouts that are at the events. And I remember I saw a coach that was like for some school and I was like, hey, how you doing? She <laughs> didn't write my name on that paper. He was like, oh, how old are you? I was like, a freshman. He was like, oh, I can't take your information. I was like, you, you can write it on a little piece of paper and just like save it for later. But I just know I've been looking at colleges and just like trying to get my, get my story written out so I can have everything ready. See, see, I don't want our community or anyone else listening to this to miss what was just said as well. So I heard words, but I also felt a character. Mm 
-hmm. the character of mm -hmm. tenacity. Mm -hmm. So you went to that coach and said, no, I can't, I can't do anything with you. You're a freshman. You said, well, you can just write it down and just keep it. What, yeah. what, so, so you spoke to a leadership character of resilience, stick to itiveness. Sometimes we say, you know, don't take no as an answer, but also those net turn those negatives into opportunities, into positives, right? And, and part of it is you, it's in your DNA, it's who you are. Part of it is in your rearing, your parents, your school, right? Sports. I want to I want to talk about school for just a moment. Mm -hmm. Some of us may be familiar with uh, Finney, Finneytown schools. Uh, those who are familiar with Cincinnati in Southwest Ohio. Uh, over the years, just like any other school, any other school district, schools have changed. Administrators have changed. Teachers have changed. You know, after retirement, and students change every two to four years hopefully, as they move on. Some of these changes you are not familiar with, right? Because they may have happened 10, 20, 30 years ago. But as you sit as a student today, in the moment, in the present, what, what changes are you witnessing, be it positive or negative, within the school, in your school, in the educational system that you say, man, that's a change that we need to watch out for, or here's a change that needs to happen to move students to the next level of their dreams. Mm -hmm. I feel like a big thing in our school is that we have a lot of diversity. I believe that Finneytown is like the third most diverse area, and I think Ohio, and that's a big thing that our school takes pride in, and I think it's something that our school needs to take a second step in with making our voices be heard. Now, within our electives, we already have a leadership class, and I'm like a member in that, and like I'm a very pro-leadership class, but I've been kind of taking a step back because I want others to like be able to get their chance to do that. But I feel like with our school, we should have more opportunities for students just to be able to speak out and explain and just preach what they want and not just what the teachers want. Mm -hmm. Cause I know that we have many, many opportunities to do it, but not many people like take the opportunity and run with it as we should. But I feel like it's because we haven't gotten the encouragement and validation to do so. And I just feel like that's something that my school needs to improve on that I would love to help be the change with. And Eric, I know you, you'll go to something here, too. Just want to hear your thoughts here, Lisa. Um, there are other school districts across the country in Ohio that are not as favorable to students and or the idea of diversity, mm -hmm. equity, inclusion, or even creating a sense of belonging for students and families. They may, they may say it on a a website or or not, but we've heard and we've seen some school districts say, students, I know you've done this for several years, but we don't agree with it. What might you say to adults, leaders, administrators who are not as uh, not as ready, not as prepared to deal with this new reality that students are expecting diversity, equity and inclusion? I feel like to those adults, I would have to explain to them that they may not be ready, but the world is ready to change. And it's not just all upon them to make that change. They have to be able to go with the flow and understand that the world is changing at a rate that nobody can understand. And they may not understand that, but that does not mean that they need to hold back the rest of us to help us grow and transform into like a grow like into a community that is tight knit together, respects each other and takes all voices and mashes them into one beautiful piece. Yeah. Wow. Again, yeah, Eric. Yeah, Lisa, I tell you, I'm I'm uh I'm uh, very impressed with who you are and the gift of the mind that you have right yes. now. Uh that is just I mean you're like a, a a seasoned scholar, you know, some kind of, you know, why scholar that's put in a ninth grader body? I mean, the world. I mean, what in the world is it? <laughs> so, uh, help me to understand. Help our community to understand all the ingredients uh, that get poured into you showing up today here uh, with this voice and this perspective. If you can give us some sense of, 
you know, your parents, your foundation, your 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 experiences in life. How did you get to this point, seeing the world the way you do? I feel like to get here to this point, I had to be very open minded. And I've always been a very open minded person, but I feel like I've gone through a big transformation. And I feel like a big part of my character being so strong and very just like outspoken and ready to speak for the change would have to be my family and who I've grown up with. My family is very outspoken and very willing to say what they see is wrong. They're very much, they're that, they're the loud family that you see at the store that's always having fun, always wants to bring their character out. And we're very tight knit and close. And I feel like with my parents' foundation, my mother, she's one of the sweetest and most wonderful people I know. My father, he's, he's pretty cool, I guess. Okay. <laughs> but I feel like that little mix of my parents, because I know my mom is a very outgoing person. She's very loud, sweet. She's been in pageants. She's done it all. And my father, he's a very, he's a very logical man that just speaks it how he sees it. And he's just in the moment living. And my sister, my sister is somebody that I give a lot of my character up to because she's somebody that I aspire to be like, even if it's not everything, but a lot of her character and how she is as a person is just somebody I strive to be like, along with many other members of my family. So I feel like with my character, I pick and choose things from my family that I'm just like, wow, that is something I really want to be like. And I implement it within myself and just begin to grow and like do what I can that feels best for myself. So it's taken a while, 14 yeah. years exact. I love that. I'm going to continue to ask you about uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and your view of things. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you see in the world around you? We certainly see a lot of division in terms of the news media. There's Fox News, there's CNN, and you know, uh, they're just always keeping something stirred up politically. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's people that are Democrats and they're okay with Biden, or th you know, think he's too old maybe. And then there's people that are struggling with Trump. What are you seeing? How is that sort of manifesting itself in uh, in high school? Uh, how are these conversations going? Or what are you seeing around diversity and people's ability to develop meaningful relationships across differences? Could you rephrase the question just one more time? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, so so I'll start with what are you seeing in school in terms of young people being able to build effective, meaningful relationships across differences? Is that occurring or are they being affected by all of the noise that's happening outside of them? I feel like you'll see a mix because a lot of people at our school, their political beliefs or like what they see in the media can conform to depending on what media they receive, whether it be like around the house or like if they saw some random TikTok video that said this about Biden or this about Trump, they'll be like, oh, that is my new opinion. And it just mm. switches like a light flickering. And it's just really interesting seeing how their opinions can change so quickly and just how their opinions can form because a lot of them really aren't based off of research or like experience. They're based off of somebody else's words and taking them and deciding to make it their new personality trait. So it just it just depends on the person. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's great insight. Yeah. Uh, that's great insight. And one, one thing that came to my mind was, you know, when we were in grammar school, uh, our teachers used to always say that you are what you eat. And there were commercials, there were cartoons, uh, videos. You are what you eat. And typically, someone will be digesting something through their mouth. But I have learned and in study that we are what we eat, but mm -hmm. we eat words more than anything. Mm -hmm. So you just said, sometimes I hear something or a student may hear something, and that's who they are. That's their view. That's, that's their identity. And then they hear another word, and there they go, switching like a light switch. Mm -hmm. um, when we think of leadership, that word, what does that mean to you? For me, leadership means to be able to have individuality and be able to stand out from the crowd. Because if you hear 15 people down the street saying that blue is the best color and you're like, hmm, should I conform to this or should I step out and say what I really believe? I feel like leadership is being able to stand against the current and being willing and able to speak for what you believe in without being deterred by others' opinions or just what all the noise is going around you. You just speak for what you feel yourself. Yeah. So so let me ask you how much I imagine that you have because you've got a lot of different abilities. You're not just smart. 
but you also have a high level of emotional intelligence. So I imagine that people people like you. It's you're not easy to not like. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, how are young people dealing today in terms of their view of people like yourself that are smart that are trying to get it done that way? We see a lot of violence that's happening, a lot of uh, influence towards that. What are you seeing in terms of your fellow students? Are they uh, excited about who you are? Are they uh, willing to kind of follow that? Or are you seeing other forces sort of get their attention? I feel like within my own experiences, within my leadership class, I have had to realize that people will be people no matter where you go. So no matter how you carry yourself, people will kind of just carry on and be who they are regardless, but they may sometimes change and listen, but it's like people will typically be who they are at heart. And I feel like it can be difficult to work with that sometimes. And it may be difficult for them to work with me at sometimes because I'm a very, how do you, what's it, what's it called when like you only want what you want and when other people are like, oh, I want this, you're kind of just like, I don't know about that one. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. So yeah. you're saying that to some extent, I'm not looking to conform to create all the craziness. So yeah. if people are doing crazy things, that ain't me. So, you know, if I miss this round, so be it. Because mm -hmm. I feel like I may feel like I'm being left out on certain things, but I have to realize I'm not being left out on my future. So I'm just going to stick to what I'm doing. Wow. 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 Incredible yeah. insight. Right. Not We're being left out you up and just sort of take you around to schools and let you talk. What are your biggest concerns about your generation? And what's your biggest excitement? Because I think that we don't know all the good news in your generation. That'd be helpful to hear hear that. But then what are some concerns that you have? I feel like my biggest concern would probably have to be with the mental health of everybody, because I feel like with the COVID year happening and everybody just kind of being isolated and being off in their world, everybody's not as socially where they should be or where they mentally should be. Like some people aren't even realizing that COVID was like three or four years ago. They're thinking it happened like a year or two ago. And it's just like they're not understanding time. And I myself am like have fallen victim to this where it's like I'm just like man like I didn't even realize this happened like three or four years ago like I'm kind of just stuck and I feel like I missed out on a year of my youth and not being able to enjoy it and just being able to grow as a person outside in the world compared to being cooped up in my room on an online class mm. yeah yeah and so that you know you mentioned that you know the COVID years being cooped up right in, in your in your home etc but I also understand that you are not only going to be cooped up, but you're you're flying the coop. You're leaving the country oh. in a few few months. Yes. Talk to us about your exploitations, your explorations outside of the United States. Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to the Galapagos in Ecuador, and I'm literally so excited for the trip because it'll be my first time out the country. I have my passport ready planning my outfits. Um, I'm ready to go snorkeling, even though I can barely swim. And I'm just really excited for this new experience because my sister is currently in Costa Rica this week. She'll be back on Tuesday. And I know I'm going to be like, so what'd you learn when you were out the country? I'm like, how much Spanish did they actually use? Because I know this year I'm in Spanish too. And I'm just like, I got to soak up all this information so I can tell them whatever I need to tell them. But you know, I'll have Google Translate ready, but I'm just really excited for this trip and the new experiences it'll bring me. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And why are you going? Um, it's just with a trip with our Spanish class. I know my mom was like, you know, it's like a, like a, what's that thing called? Like you're volunteering and you're doing work and stuff. And I'm like, mom, this isn't a missionary. I'm going for funsies. But <laughs> that's hilarious. So <laughs> you are still a young person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going for funsies. I love that. <laughs> So, so what do you see in your future that uh, you said this, I think, earlier, but what do you want to do with your life? I mean, you're, you're, you're in the ninth grade, so you got a lot of time left to think that through. But how do you see utilizing your skill set? What, what do you how do you want to impact uh, this country and the world around? you? I feel like with whatever career I do, I honestly just want it to be something where I'm able to speak how I truly feel and how I see the world is like changing for the better or the good and just be able to point it out where I see it 
And I just want to be able to make an impact no matter where it is. Because I know last year I was really into engineering or like a couple years before that, I was like, I want to be a lawyer. But now I'm kind of just into uh, genetics and like genetic engineering because I know it's always been a topic that it interested me. And I feel like with genetic engineering, there are like a bunch of possibilities, whether it be with like gene coding or like just really anything that can help the just help us get forward in the future for the better. You know, oftentimes when I hear scholars, leaders, students talk about their careers, and I've been around a lot of students, uh, sometimes I hear a very focused and narrow pursuit of a career, mm -hmm. right? And then I talk to adults and I learn that there are adults, professionals, who are doing a job they can be an engineer, but then they have a hobby or a passion that they're really talented and gifted in. Mm -hmm. And they do that just as much as they do their, quote unquote, their job. Mm -hmm. And when I was going through a training, there was a story about a millwright, the owner of this company, who would create wood furniture. And when he passed away, the, the, the new owner uh, wanted to, you know, share some words at the funeral. And so the new owner had visited the, uh, uh, the old owner's wife and asked, hey, can you tell me a little bit about the, the owner, your husband? And she w went back in the back room and she came out and she gave him a, a huge book of poems. And he was gracious because the woman was in mourning and didn't want to kind of disrespect her. So he was reading the poems, you know, and she was crying and laughing and smiling and, you know, a little bit recluse. And at the end of about an hour or so, uh, he said, this is this is fantastic. These are these are your poems. Uh, but I, I really came over to learn a little bit more about your husband, uh, you know, the millwright. And she says, oh, oh, my, my husband he really wasn't a millwright. He was a poet. He made a living as a millwright. That was his job. But who he was, was a poet. He was an artist. And so I would invite you, as you think about your career, mm -hmm. consider being all mm -hmm. that you want to be. Absolutely. It can be an engineer. You can be an attorney, right? Because I do know engineers who are attorneys and attorneys who are engineers. I know engineers who are accountants, right? They just changed the job and now they, they have, they, they've had their CPA for years. So I, I want to leave, you know, kind of civil engineering and I go into my degreed field. Like I never knew you had a degree in a CPA. Oh yeah. I just haven't used it in 20 years. I'm offering to you and others that we are more than just one thing, one job. Eric Ellis is an example of that. I'm always in awe that I truly value Eric for his experience, his expertise in diversity, equity, and inclusion. But he's an artist. And I, I listen to songs that he's produced, written, he has performed. And I'm like, I just want to bust out singing and I can't sing a lick, right? I can't sing a lick. Sing with your mind. Like, what, what else am I? What else am I? So I would like to, to change the subject just a bit and, and talk about your experience with the Illuminate Leadership Conference, mm -hmm. right? The Illuminate Leadership Conference. Uh, talk to us about that, that experience. I feel like with the Illuminate Leadership Conference, it was such an amazing experience for me from, I think it was after the COVID year that it happened. It was like the summer after. So I was very excited to go out and be able to just speak with everybody and like speak all my ideas and learn and grow. 
but I was also kind of afraid because being in a new environment, but I feel like with the community of people that were there and the leaders, like it was so welcoming with everybody. And it just made me really comfortable, even though it was over the course of six days, I felt like I had been there for a year and it was just really enjoyable. And with the second year with like the new group being brought in with the younger students, I know like the older students were kind of just like, Hmm, this is a little fishy. I don't know if we like you guys, but over the week, like we enjoyed the group and it was really enjoyable being around them and just being able to help out in the ways we could and like seeing how they took our experience like we did like with the Da Vinci Bridge our first year and how they had handled it and how like you guys presented the problem to them. It was interesting seeing how you guys tweaked the program a little, <clears throat> a little bit. Yeah, thank you. yeah, yeah. And the Da Vinci Bridge is a is a real bridge that was created by Leonardo da Vinci. Mm -hmm. And he created it because he was an inventor for those who are less familiar. He created this bridge that you could begin to build the bridge over a waterway from one side. You did not have to literally be on the other side yet, right? And that was critical as folks were trying to get over waterways. And this is a miniature wooden da Vinci bridge that basically has a uh, rungs like a ladder. And the problem is, the challenge, if you will, is that uh, the students in a the group, they each have one or two different prongs and they have to, one, they have to communicate clearly of what, to envision what the bridge looks like. Is it a flat bridge or is it a arcing bridge or what is a bridge? And then they have to build the bridge together. Uh, the bridge itself, which spans about four or five feet, it stands about three to three and a half feet high. It's a physical bridge that one can walk over. So although it's not put together by way of nails, screws and mortar, it's a physical uh, bridge that is put together by tension stress, right? And you can walk over. And it's not an easy challenge. And Alyssa and her group did a great job, returned back from year two. And as she mentioned, to take a look at, you know, how did they learn their new skill? And then also taking a look at these, these newbies and what challenges they had. Uh, you also had an opportunity, I turn it over to you, Eric. You also had an opportunity to meet with some executives, some corporate executives. We went to a company called Perfetti Van Mail. Uh, they make uh, conven com convection uh, candy. They make candy, right? And so it's just like how it's made. We had opportunity to meet with a, a Dr. Karen Bangston, a Dr. Whitney Gaskins, right? Uh, the Greater Cincinnati Waterworks Executive Director, Kathy Bailey. Uh, talk to us about your experience talking with, meeting, experiencing executive women, some of them of color at the highest level of their careers and exposing you to that opportunity. To me, it was like really empowering meeting them because I was like, ooh, that could be me one day. And it was just enjoyable seeing them and seeing even with a job with like working with candy and making airheads and all that stuff to controlling and like making sure that us the greater Cincinnati area has clean water like it just really shows how diverse your leadership can stretch in like really any division that you're interested in and it was it was kind of nerve-wracking meeting them because I was like oh my goodness maybe I'll get to shake their hand or something and it was exciting doing it and it was just it was really enjoyable overall because it's like you would never expect there'd be like a really cool executive person working with candy but I mean you'd expect it more with the waterworks but like they're still both very important figures no matter what like angle you look at it yeah well uh Alyssa I, I want to say this to you that number one uh I feel as though we're in the presence of a great leader uh in this country and maybe even in the world and I want to congratulate and honor your parents and your family uh, for who they are that is being evidenced by, uh, by who you are. Uh, and uh, I just think that uh, that's a powerful thing. And so anybody that has ears to hear, uh, you know, will hear 
that, I mean, you got to go a long way. You're so far past your years that it's just kind of shocking. Uh, for, for colleges, universities, for workplaces that would be interested in you being, uh, you know, you attending their university, you working at their company, what are the top three things that you're looking for uh, in terms of as you make a decision about where you're going to go and invest yourself? What is it that you're looking for? Uh, the top things, three things I'll be looking for would have to be diversity. I feel like the location would play a big part because no offense to Ohio, but I kind of want to get out just, just to see the world a little bit. And I feel like a college that has a really tight knit community where it's like an everybody knows everybody thing. And it's like, it's just like a really welcoming aura that comes off of the place. And I'm just like, when I walk in, this is the place. And also wrestling too, because I would love to wrestle in college. Yeah. And I want to say, hold on to your humility uh, because when you have humility, walk alongside uh, wisdom and, and great intellect, that's a beautiful package. And it really, it prepares you to be able to uh, impact this world in a powerful way. I want to bring back Terry Cooley's comment because uh, he says, I'm blown away uh, at uh, this young lady's mindset. I can't wait to let my boys. So Terry Cooley's a foster uh, parent mm -hmm. and he's got four boys that live with him and he can't wait to let them see you. Uh, he says, I can honestly say the world is in good hands because of you. And uh, that's the kind of impact that you have. And just in your simple way, smiling and then just, I mean, it's really kind of all, uh, you know, uh, seeing to just kind of hear who you are and the wisdom that's there and the humility. I just think, Tommy, this is another uh, gift of a guest, man. I want to show this to uh, everybody. And I want to ask you a thousand questions because, I mean, our time is, is going to get away from us. But I just think that there's so much that you have uh, to offer. I want to ask again about diversity. Uh, are, do you see uh, young students of color being open to and supportive of diversity? When we think about diversity, we're always thinking about sort of the dominant culture, white people and their prejudices. But what are you seeing in terms of students of color and their openness to embrace uh, people differences? I feel like it really depends on who you're looking at because I feel like a lot of communities can reflect their own insecurities on other POCs, whether it be with always like searching for Eurocentric, Eurocentric beauty standards and other people and tearing down other people of color out of their own insecurities or just like making fun of other people's cultures because it's the unknown. I mean, if you don't understand something, some people's first instinct is to make fun of it. That's kind of sad, but it may be some people's first instinct. While it really should be learning and understanding compared to ostracizing and like making it other. And I feel like it just really depends on who you're around and how they grew up to know what their opinion is on certain things, whether it be like including them and making them be seen compared to ostracizing them and making them feel like others. Yes. And so we hear a lot about social media and its impact on your generation. I, I have a hypothesis that it feels like there's been an increase. You talked about mental health being the number. I agree with that. And it feels like there's uh, an increasing amount of anxiety, mm -hmm. uh, panic disorder, uh, stress, depression, uh, what are you seeing in terms of, of, of young people, their mental health and the impact of social media on on people's uh, self self worth? I feel like social media, it, it's kind of a 50 50 situation because I feel like it can uplift and bring you whether it be like seeing people that look like you in the media and, and like seeing that diversity that can be seen. But it can also tear you down by like just with the beauty standards and like the information that they're putting on there that may be negative or hateful to others or just like rude in general. And it just makes you wonder like, who raised this person? Like, actually, like, how did you turn out like this? It just depends on like how you look at it. And I feel like sometimes with social media, like you're kind of digging yourself in a hole because it's like, of course you want to get on the good side, but it just like, it just depends on like your point of view of it and like how you use it and if you use it for good or for bad. One more, Tommy. You, you see how our generation is kind of navigating the world right now. 
what are we to anticipate from your generation? What do you see? Are we headed this way? You can't wait to get the wheel, the steering wheel, or are we going to kind of maintain? Or are we going, what's, what's the trajectory? If you were to look into Alyssa's sort of uh, crystal ball for the future, uh, tell us what we are to anticipate. Wait, this is a question for me? Yes, yes, oh, okay. yes. <laughs> I feel like with our generation, I feel like it really depends on not just our generation, but your generation, because okay. I feel like, not, I'm not trying to point the blame, but I feel like the generations before us had made this a world that we don't want to look up. You guys are always asking why we're always looking down at our phone. It's because other generations have made this a world where we don't want to look up and look around because of what we're seeing, whether it be like with the Willow Project, whether it be with like all the negativity that's around us, because the Internet is kind of like an escape for us. So we don't have to be surrounded by all the noise and all the fuzzies of like just everything going on in the world. It's like an escape so we can be in our own little world and just be somewhere where we feel safe. And if the world around us isn't safe due to the people around us, why would we want to look up? We're going to look down regardless because it's just like a safe place for us. That was that was profound for me. Oh, that's what I'm saying, that's Tommy. Just, that's just yeah. a, that's a thought. The reason why it was profound for me because I, I have... One of my sons, a young young son, a uh, junior, uh, and he has been experiencing a lot of a lot of great things, a lot of opportunities for development. And as I try to be as transparent with him and ask him to be transparent with me, he has been. And one of the things that he said during or just recently after an episode is that he said, "Dad, I." I don't really care about that. Mm. And from my view, I thought he should care about it. Right. Not going to go into details, but I'm like, here's some decisions I was making, son, because you should care. He was like, no, that I don't care about it at all because that's you and what you're dealing with. Mm. And when he told me that it was the honest truth, mm -hmm. I could literally feel what he was saying. Why should I care about what you are having to grapple with? Because what you're grappling with really has nothing to do with me. And I know it. Mm. Right? right. And so adults, our generation, have created these platforms, technology, the internet, the the, the hyper uh, uh, kind of s s um, sensitivity and just romanticizing sometimes violence and we've dumped it on the next generation. The next generation says that reality is not one that I like. I'll rather put my head down, look at the phone and just be entertained and then look up to walk forward versus looking up to the world is on fire. Right. Right. It, that was profound because right. the world is on fire. Absolutely. And adults created that. Right. And we're saying, young people, look at the fire that we created. And young people are saying, why? Right. I don't care about that fire. Right, 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 right. What you just said was profound to me. <laughs> Absolutely, it, man. It, it, it It's uh, going to inspire us. I mean, you didn't let us off the hook at all. I mean, he was like. Not at all. You trying to ask me? About you. Well, well, you know, hold up. Let me let me turn this right back around, and that's going to recharge our batteries because both Tommy Lewis and I are every day facilitating conversations to, in a nutshell, teach people how to love each other and how to care about each other. That's what we do in a nutshell. And uh, now you've given us another charge, and that is, hey, you all, you're making so much negative noise that the next generation is saying, I'm not interested in that. You've got to do better than that. Uh, if you want us to look up and really start trying to make plans for, you know, what we want to do with this thing. I think that that's just, uh, that's huge. Any other nuggets like that that you want to drop on us? I mean, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, I'll save them for later. I'll save them for later. I don't really have anything right now. My creative juices aren't flowing. It's a little early. <laughs> it's early. It's early. It's early. But I, I did want to call out uh, a leadership characteristic or leadership skill set that Alyssa just uh, exhibited. Uh, 
there's a characteristic of being direct, but not hurtful or harmful. It's an art and a skill. She was asked a question. She thought about it and gave a very direct answer. She had a receipt in my mind. She had a receivable pitch and tone. So it wasn't hurtful. It wasn't harmful. It wasn't harmful. It wasn't hateful. It was, here's my thought. And I think that there's some accountability on the, the adult generation, if you will, as well as my own generation. Right. That's a skill set that I think. I agree with that, Tommy. That many Rare. adults don't have. And the reason why I say that is because this is the work that Eric and I do with right. courageous conversations, diversity conversations, that we have adults that, are, that avoid, withdraw, or shy away from having kind of discourse, having the conversation. And what you just exhibited was, I'll take the question. I thought about it, not just now, but before. Mm. Here's my thought. Right, right. And we then lean into a conversation like this around diversity of thought, mm -hmm. diversity of thought. So when we were doing this work 10, 15 years ago, there was some pushback to say, hey, Diversity is beyond race, gender, orientation, et cetera. It does include that. It's about diversity of thought. And then we started to have the diversity of thought and people said, that makes me uncomfortable, right? Now that we're having this, this conversation, I'm uncomfortable. You need to say something to me that makes me more, uh, more comfortable. What are we doing here? Right. What are we talking about? This generation, of true leaders are saying, we can take comfort and discomfort in the same vein, in the same vein. And so I wanna say kudos to you. Terry Cooley is chiming in and, and Alyssa, you don't know that Mr. Cooley is in California, mm -hmm. right? So he joins us three hours before our call. So we start at 9.30, it's 6.30 there, religiously every Saturday morning. Well, he says, please let you know that you should continue to work hard at your wrestling because that will definitely lead and pay your way through college and to the Olympics, the Olympic games, if that's where you wanna go. Right, 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 right. Reach for the stars, right? And I'm saying reach for the stars, but I think it's easier for you as a star to reach among your own. Reach among your own, your other stars, because you're already a star. You. Yeah, this has been really a, a gift to us this morning. Uh, it is, uh, uh, it's rare for us, uh, this, the stereotypes about your generation don't include you. Uh, yeah. So we uh, don't hear uh, a lot about uh, a, a you. Uh, we don't see that enough. Uh, and uh, you you said from the outset, and I'm not alone. You know, my mother is all of this. My father's all of this. My sister's all of this. So this, I'm not any different than everybody else that's in my house. Uh, if someone is saying, I, uh, you know, what does it mean to you to create a sense of belonging? Uh, if people are trying to create a sense of belonging for you, what would that include? I feel like a sense of belonging is like a topic that I still struggle with myself, whether it be like trying to find a group that I resonate with or just trying to find like people or like a community that I'm comfortable in. I feel like to find that sense of community, it takes time, understanding, and just like willingness to just be open and go with the flow. Because I know that's something that I don't always do, mm -hmm. but uh, I want to be more open to it to be able to find those groups and communities that make me feel seen and they make me feel present and in the moment, like I'm meant to be there, like I'm doing something I should be. Now, Tommy, you know, anything she says now, we could almost slow it down the camera frame and say, you had said a mouthful. You said that I'm still in search of that community and you didn't put all of the responsibility on those communities that are intact. You say, I, I want to continue to work as well. I just think that that's profound. Uh, that's powerful. Uh, I just want 
Uh, if you ever feel discouraged, I want you to know that you got some fans out here, people who see you, uh, see the gift of who you are, are praying for you, uh, that God will uh, use you in great ways. Uh, we already see your greatness. And I would be uh, honored to be almost like your agent, <laughs> just to introduce you to people that, because it becomes our collective responsibility as a community, as a village, to make sure that you are successful. Uh, that you survive and that you get to the future that you believe you've been purposed to be at. Uh, just know that I'm an advocate. Tommy Lewis has introduced us. I'm an advocate to you, your family, because uh, I think that uh, you're somebody great right now. And humility will keep you there. Uh, don't ever just start reading the press and, and hearing people say things and let too much of that get in your head. Uh, you, you have to know who you are, uh, but the humility is what even makes your star uh, shine that much brighter. Tommy? I'll share this and then turn it to listen for our closing words. Uh, she is returning to the Illuminate Leadership Conference this year as a volunteer. She's going to be behind the scenes. We're going to be picking your brain, Alyssa, to understand how can we improve the experiences for all the other students who are gonna be joining. This summer, it's Sunday, June the 25th through Saturday, uh, Friday, June 30th. If you're interested uh, in enrolling, you can come from around the world, around the country for this six day residential experience. You simply have to go to www.ili- leaders.org. That's ili-leaders.org. And you'll see the Illuminate website. Alyssa, any closing words for us today? Um, I feel like what I'd like to leave the people with today is to enjoy yourself while you can, because if you don't, you'll die for nothing. Mm. Just, just enjoy yourself while you can in the moment. Okay. Indeed. And all With of that being is. said, I'll close this out. Right. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. Again, we'll be here next week again. And we are blessed and always grateful to have you all join us, our community, our guest, Alyssa Bolt and others. And please come back and join us for another conversation in Diversity Conversations. We'll see you soon. Take, Take care. care. Thank Bye. you. Bye.